What's up, everybody? Chester AP Church Devotional Podcast. Thank you so much for being with us. Genesis chapter 9. Here we go. Well, it's in the chapter 8. Mitch brings us in. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living. All right, here we go. Genesis chapter 8. I'm actually going to read at the end of the chapter, beginning in verse 15, the Lord's promise. So then the Lord God spoke to Noah, come out of the ark, you, your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out all the living creatures that are with you, birds, livestock, and those that crawl on the earth, and they will spread over the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah, along with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives came out. All the animals and all the creatures that crawl and all the flying creatures, everything that moves on the earth came out of the ark by their families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. He took some of every kind of clean animal and every kind of clean bird and offered burnt offerings to the Lord. When the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, he said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of human beings, even though the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth onward. And I will never again strike down every living thing as I have done. For as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. Now, this is, uh, can you imagine? (laughs) Let me just take a moment and say, can you imagine the celebration of the worship of God after Noah and his family got out of the ark? I mean, they've been in the ark for over a year. And they finally get out of the ark. Noah breaks down and makes this tremendous sacrifice to the Lord. You can imagine the joy, the celebration, the excitement. Nobody else on earth, they endured. God provided. God kept them through it. They persevered in faith. God preserved them by his grace and provided along the way for them as they were in the ark for this lengthy period of time. They must have been shouting when they got out. Can you imagine his sons and their wives as they got out? Can you imagine Noah's wife? Can you imagine Noah? I got away from all this by the grace and mercy of God. You better doggone believe we're going to put down an altar, and you better doggone believe we're going to sacrifice, and you better believe we're going to celebrate the fact that God saved us. Man, that is a testimony unlike any other. And hopefully and prayerfully, if you've been saved by grace miraculously like that, you have a testimony and you're willing to worship God. That's one of the things that blows my mind, by the way, uh, about people who don't want to join with the people of God to worship God. Right, so when we gather together for corporate worship on the Sunday, and people that don't make a habit of gathering together on the corporate worship on the Sunday, provided they're able. If they're not able, that's a different story. But if they're able to gather with the people of God and they don't do it, I don't understand it. Because if you've truly been saved by grace, and you truly have come to know the fullness and the freedom of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and being saved from your sin as Noah and his family began to understand it through the ark, can you imagine the celebration? You should be wanting to celebrate. You should be wanting to offer yourself to the Lord. And Noah here does that. They have a tremendous party and a sacrifice. All these animals are free and they're running off and they're uh, repopulating. In some senses, it's like Adam in the Garden of Eden again. All the animals come to Adam to be uh, named. After a year on the ark, those animals are tamed, right, most likely. And so they're going to be hanging around. And so it's almost like now we've got this restart in the Garden of Eden, as it were. Though Adam and Eve brought sin into the world, and though Noah and his family are sinners because God says the human heart is wicked from youth on, you and I have a sinful heart just like Noah did. But we've been saved by grace. Noah was saved by grace through faith. And so, um, it, but it's like it's starting over again. And so now all the animals disperse and they repopulate the earth and Adam and Eve are to repopulate the earth and God gives that beautiful promise, right? I'll never do this again. I'll never destroy the earth. I'll never destroy seed time and harvest. I'll never destroy sun and moon. I'll never wipe it out again uh, because people are wicked, right? God is progressively moving us toward in the story of redemption, but even in history, toward the coming Savior, the Messiah, who would give his life. Salvation is not through an ark in the midst of a flood. Salvation now is through faith in the person who suffered judgment on our behalf. 
And so we trust the Lord and we walk with Jesus and we know that this promise is true that when God comes to destroy, he's going to remake uh, once and for all. He's never going to destroy again. He made the world and now he's decided he's going to leave the world as it is and he's not going to destroy it again and there's going to be the normal rhythms of life which are reflective of the rhythms of God's nature and reflective of the goodness of God. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, night and day will not cease because God is a God of graciousness and a God of promise and makes a promise. Now he's going to enter into a covenant with Noah next time in Genesis chapter 9. But right now I want you to see the fullness of the, uh, of the grace and mercy of God saving Noah. The promise the Lord makes. But also I want you to notice the provision. But Noah's response and the family's response to the grace of God. That we respond to God in a way that says thank you for your kindness to us. I hope and pray we do. You guys take care. God bless you. I'll see you Monday. You can. Be close to your heart And surely Your goodness and mercy will find